Support for UWTV is provided by the Boeing Employees Credit Union. It was about three years ago when I did a half marathon, that's when I thought, this is, something's wrong, something's really hurting. And you know, and I put it off, put it off, and then finally I just was at the point where I couldn't even hardly walk. Any kind of exercise, that's when I do my deep thinking. You know, it's my time to myself, which I need. You know, it just makes me feel good. When I was in a lot of pain, I didn't have that. That was taken away from me. And that really was bothering me. So I decided I better get, you know, do something about it because I wanted to get back into my active life. Hello and welcome to Talk Medicine. My name is Paul Manor. I'm an orthopedic surgeon who recently joined the University of Washington Medical Center. One of the things that we do at the University of Washington Medical Center is minimally invasive joint replacement. And today we're going to talk with a patient who has had this procedure done on her hip. And I'd like to introduce Ms. Janice Eisner, who underwent a total hip replacement about eight weeks ago. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we did the procedure and why we did it in the first place. What I'd like to do to start with is just ask you to tell me a little bit about how we got to having a hip replacement. Tell me a little bit about how this started. Uh, it happened about a year and a half ago. I was at school working and going up and down some, a flight of stairs and um, I felt a real sharp pain. It kind of brought me to my knees. I didn't think anything of it for a while there. Then it just proceeded to get worse and worse. And um, I went to my doctor, and she referred me to a surgeon. And I saw him, and they took an X-ray, and they couldn't find anything at that time. And they thought it was an ITB band, so they gave me some exercises to do. And that didn't help. So I went to my doctor again, and she referred me to physical therapy. We did that for a little while, and it just you know proceeded to get worse. And um, then the doctor referred me to another doctor to get an MRI done. And at that time, we decided, let's, you know, let's do a cortisone shot. So we did a cortisone shot, and that lasted for a couple hours, really. At first, I was like, oh, my goodness, it's gone. The pain is gone. But it just lasted for a little while. And then um, my husband was uh, talking with me about it, and he knew of a gentleman a Dr. Green um, at the University of Washington and referred me to him to go see him because he specialized in hips. So I made an appointment and saw Dr. Green and he took an x-ray of my hip and saw that I had a tear in my labrum and uh, said that we will go and do arthroscopic surgery and fix the tear and you should be fine. So I went, had the operation with him and at that time he had seen that the tear wasn't the problem that I was having. It was, there was uh, no cartilage. So it was arthritis. And I was kind of like surprised, like, I have arthritis? So then um, Dr. Green said, well, you're going to need a hip replacement sometime down the road. And I said, well, you know, could we get it done right away? Because, I, you know, I would like to get back on my normal way of living. And um, he said, I have a gentleman, Dr. Manor, that just moved here from um, Washington, D.C., that is a specialist in a new type of procedure. And that's when I came to see you. Great. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what was happening in your, in your normal day-to-day -day life? One of the things that we look for is how pain affects people and how disability affects people in terms of normal activities. What were the things that were hard for you to do? Well, I'm a very active person and it pretty much stopped me from doing my normal exercising, running. I pretty much couldn't run anymore. I've been a runner all my life and um, that the pain was just too excruciating to run. Even walking, just doing, you know, going and walking. Um, sleeping was the big cause of, um, you know, my searching out for some relief because I was not getting any sleep at all. And the doctor, a couple of the doctors that I had seen, they prescribed um, medication for me to be able to sleep and take away the pain, but it really didn't help me at all. And so um, it pretty much just stopped 
my way of my everyday active life. Okay. What about things like stairs or putting on shoes and socks? Did you find that the hip was getting stiff at all? It was. I, it was really hard for me to put on my shoes, just tying them, um, putting them on. Going downstairs, I had to definitely hold on to railings and really take it, you know, take and watch how I was going down the stairs, take it slow. All right. So you were finding that the pain was really getting in the way of your day-to-day -day life? It certainly was. Okay. Well, let's take a look and see what the x-rays showed us uh, back at the beginning of the summer. What we have here is a, a picture of both of your hips. And what you can see here on the good side is that there is a black space between the two bones. And the bone, what we're looking at here is the bone of the femur and the bone of the pelvis. So this is what a normal hip should look like. And you can see that there's a space between the two bones. And the reason there's a space there is because there's cartilage that lines the surface of the joint. When we go over to the side that was giving you problems, you can see that instead of having a, a good, nice black space there, there's essentially no cartilage at all, and you're scraping bone on bone. And that's what arthritis is going to look like on an x-ray. So at that point, we, I guess we started talking about a hip replacement for you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we know is that total hips work, and we've been doing total hip replacements for about 30 or 40 years. So we know that we have a long history of good results with, with total hip replacement. But more recently, what we've realized is that maybe we don't need to make huge incisions. Maybe we don't need to do huge dissections to do the operation. So let's talk a little bit about what a traditional total hip replacement is going to look like and compare it to what we're going to be doing uh, when we do your surgery. So a traditional total hip replacement involves an 8 to 10 inch incision along the side of the hip right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a model and try and line it up a little bit with the x-ray. So we're going to line that up just like that. And what you can see here is that you have the ball, you have the socket that lines up with the ball and the socket on the x-ray. So a traditional total hip replacement would involve an incision out here, about 8 to 10 inches long. And what we would do is we would open it up all the way. We would take the muscles off the bone. We would put the implant in, close everything up at the end of uh, the case, and put you on a walker or a set of crutches for about six weeks. And then what we would do is we would switch you over to a cane for six weeks. So that means about a three-month rehab time. And that's a long time to be... Uh, off work and it's a long time to not be able to do the normal things that you want to do. Mm -hmm. So more recently what we've done is we've started going to a minimally invasive hip replacement. And a minimally invasive hip replacement is minimally invasive because it avoids cutting the muscles that surround the hip. And the way that we're going to do that in your case is we're going to make a small incision on the front of the hip. So again I'm going to show this on, on the model. So we're going to make about a two inch incision on the front of the hip here, which would correspond on the x-ray to right over here. We're then going to make a second incision right here in the back of the hip, which would correspond to about this area on the x-ray. And what that allows us to do is uh, it allows us to push some groups of muscles out of the way. So we're going to, from the front, we're going to put the cup in. Through the back incision, we're going to put the stem in. And then we're going to close everything up. We're going to allow you to start walking on it right away because we haven't cut any of the muscles. We haven't taken out any of the capsule, and so we can do the same procedure through a much smaller approach. That was attractive to me. Instead of sure. cutting a big 8 to 10 inch incision down my leg, just having a 2 inch incision at the top of my um, hip and at the back of my hip, and the recovery time, that was very exciting to me. Great. Well, let's take a look at the uh, video of your surgery, and let's talk a little bit about how we're going to do the procedure. Okay. So just to get things started and show show everybody where we are. What we're looking at is uh, in the operating room and you're on the table and you can see your foot is encased in a sterile uh, what we call a stockinette and that's uh, what we're doing up at the top there is uh, we have a, a, a yellow plastic drape with which is impregnated with antibiotics and that's helping to control any stray stray bugs or bacteria that might get in the way and I'm off to the left there and I have an assistant to my left and another assistant across the table. And one of the things that's interesting about this procedure that we don't do for a normal total hip replacement is we're using x-ray while we're doing the procedure. And you can see that uh, white uh, cylinder is, in fact, the x-ray machine. Now, what's that string that you looks like you're sewing? That's a good question. What I've done there is we've actually split uh, between a couple of groups of muscles. So we haven't cut any muscles at all here. 
And what I've done there is I've put a stitch into each leaf of the capsule that surrounds your hip joint. One way to think of the capsule is that it's the gristle that encases the joint. And you can see we have some retractors in there. And what we're doing now is we're exposing the hip joint from the front. So let's take a look at what we would be doing when we do the actual procedure. And what I have here is a model of a hip. And we're going to show you that on the, on the videotape, what we've done is we've made an incision about two inches long right over here on the front of the hip. And that would correspond on the x-ray to right about here. And what we've done is we've pushed a group of muscles out of the way here. We've pushed a, a group of muscles out of the way here. So what we're doing now is we've, we're looking straight down at the front of the hip here. And what we're going to do now, and what we're going to see on the videotape, is we're going to remove the top part of the femur, and we're going to start preparing the cup, or the pelvis side of the bone. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. So what we've done here is we've prepared the surface of the bone, and I've just inserted the prosthesis into the bone of the pelvis. And now we don't need those retractors, so we're going to go ahead and take those out. And you're going to see us maneuvering the, the implant into position, and we're going to start taking some pictures in just a second, as soon as we get that where we think it's supposed to go. And we're going to be using some delicate equipment there. You saw one of them coming in right there. <laughs> that would be the mallet that we're going to use to place the uh, implant where it belongs. So there come the retractors. And we're taking some pictures. So what, we, what we've done at this point is we have prepared the surface of the bone, and we're going to insert the implant into the bone just like so. And what we've done here is we're bringing an x-ray machine in from the top so we can make sure that the implant's exactly where we have it lined up. And you can see that if we've done it right, it's going to line up exactly with the anatomy of the pelvis. So once we have the first part of the operation done, which is the cup, we're going to then switch gears a little bit. We're going to put in the, the stem. So the stem, again, is a uh, titanium stem. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be inserting that stem down the center of the femur like so. So keep in mind, we've already removed this part of the bone. And the idea is that this is going to take the place of the femur just like that. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look on the videotape what we're doing here. What we've done is we've crossed your leg up and over the other side. And again, we're still using x-ray. And what, I've, what I'm doing here is creating a channel down the center of the bone. And in a second, I'm going to take something called a brooch. And we're going to insert that under x-ray guidance down the center of the femur. And we're going to check and make sure that it's exactly in the direction that we want it to go. And I'm just checking on the x-ray to make sure it's exactly where I want it. And now we're going to go ahead and insert that. And that's shaped exactly like the implant. Everybody's shaking their head. Yeah. Must be no, we're happy. We're, in there correctly. Yeah, no, this is good. We're, we're putting it where, right where we want it. You can see the, uh, see the assistants are uh, making sure that I'm, I'm doing this the right way. <laughs> so the last thing that we're going to do before the surgery finishes is we're going to bring the two components together. So what that's going to look like, and we'll see it on the x rays, we're going to bring it in like that. And we're going to roll the hip back and forth and check and make sure that it's in the appropriate position. And what we want is we want it to look something like this when we get done. So what we're going to see on the, on the videotape is we are going to be bringing the leg into position, and at the very end we're going to take a picture and make sure that it's going to look something exactly like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the videotape. And so at this point, we've brought the leg back. I'm checking and make sure it's not going to go out. I'm going to really stress this about as hard as I can to make sure that this is not something you're going to be able to do in real life. Oh, my poor leg. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have you under anesthesia. <laughs> and I'm checking to make sure that it's absolutely stable. Because the last thing I want to do is have you get a hip that doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And we're checking to make sure it's the right length and that it's appropriately positioned. And that's one of the nice things about having the x-ray machine in the operating room is we can see exactly what we're doing all the way through the case if we need to. And that's pretty helpful. So let's talk a little bit about what happened after the surgery. Now, normally with a traditional total hip replacement, you're going to be on a walker or a set of crutches for six weeks, and then you're going to be on a cane for six weeks. So we're talking about minimum of a 12-week rehab period. 
that's a pretty long time, especially mm -hmm. for somebody uh, who's young and who's active, and in your case, you're working. You need to get back to work. So why don't, mm -hmm. you, why don't you tell me a little bit about how things went for you after the surgery? Well, the next day, the therapist came in, and I was able to walk with crutches and go up a couple of stairs. And then um, I was on crutches for about 10 days, and then I came and saw you, and you took away the crutches. Right. And, um, you know, I was, walk I was walking pretty good, but I, had a I was walking slow, slower than normal, just, you know, being more cautious of where I was walking and, and steps and curbs. And, and then I um, was able to drive my car after two weeks after recovery. That was really exciting. That was my independence was back. And, um, and I was able to go back to work um, right away. I'm, I'm a teacher, so I um, was able to um, start work the, the week just before the children start and um, just had to take it easy going up and down stairs and um, then I dis I was able to start um, going to the club and um, my fitness club and start cycling and I was able to do like 10 minutes at a time during this time I was also going to physical therapy three times a week and um, they had me on some exercises so it was pretty neat to see the recovery, how, many, how fast I was able to do, recover and be able to do, move my hip and do certain kind of exercises that um, wasn't real easy for me to do prior to the surgery. Sure. Now one of the things that we had talked about before the surgery was that you were only going to be in the hospital for one to two days. So what, what kind of things did you do before the surgery to get yourself ready? The therapist um, showed me how to use the crutches correctly and how to go up and down stairs correctly. Um, that was a big help. Sure. And I had to prepare my house where I had to get a shower stool to be able to take a shower, and um, also an elevated um, seat for the for the toilet because you can't really sit all the way down. It's just right. it's very painful. Um, but that was only for um, two weeks. And then I was able to, I didn't have to use it anymore in the shower. I only had to use a shower stool for a week. That's mm -hmm. it. My bedroom's upstairs, two flights of stairs, and I had railings on both sides, so that was easy. I, I didn't have any problem really going up and down the stairs. I just had to take it slower than usual. Right. And, um, but pretty much, you know, there's a couple of devices that my therapist did give me to be able to help. Do you have those with you? I do. Great. Yeah, let's take a look. Um, this one was, they gave to me right away when I was in the hospital to be able to get in and out of the bed. And um, you just put your foot and like this, and then you're able to lift it up on the bed. Um, otherwise, you'd have to take your hands and put it up there, and it's, it's, your leg's pretty painful. And this is a little gripper that helps you be able to pick up things off the floor, help you put your shoes on, pull your pants up, and these really helped a lot. Sure. Um, but that was just for, you know, like maybe two to three weeks I had to use those. And um, other than that, I just, you know, each day was like, you know, I was recovering a little bit more and a little bit more. Good. What, uh, what other kind of things do you think would be helpful for people to know about this? That um, the recovery time is short okay. and the incisions are small. Um, you know, I was, on, I was on the pain meds for like the first week. And then after that, I was just taking um, Tylenol okay. just to, you know, help uh, with the pain. But that was only for like another five days, and then I was off. On, I was on nothing, and it was. Um, you can get right back to work. I was, you know, didn't really stop me from doing much. Just like for about ten days, mm -hmm. you know, about a week to ten days, it's um, just recovered, took it slow. But after that, I was, you know, able to proceed with the way my my life was, just on a slower scale. Okay. Now, one of, one of the things that's, uh, I think, important to remember is that you're a very active person. You used to be a marathon runner. Mm -hmm. What kind of things are you doing now? I'm not running any longer. Right. Well, we, um, we did discuss that. That's probably not good for the long-term health of the implant. Right. And um, I'm able to cycle, swim, walk, um, go to the gym, use the elliptical. Um, you know, you just have to see what works best for you. Right. And, um, so I'm very excited about that. I decided I'm going to be, you know, really get into cycling, which I love anyhow. But you know, that um, was exciting to see that when I was able to get on the bike, it the, there was no pain at all. That's it was fantastic. Very exciting. Yeah. That is fantastic. Why don't we take a look? I think we have some video of you do, doing some of your activities right now. The first time when I got back to the gym and I rode the encumbered bike, the 
first I was writing it at therapy. That's where I started. And that was really exciting. They had me on it for five minutes. And then I'd go back the next day and I'd go, let's do 10 minutes. And let's do 20. You know, and I was up to 30. And so they said, yeah, you can just go to the gym and just do that on your own. So that was nice, giving me that little bit of freedom, that independence of going back to the gym and being able to just work out every day. And then I just, you know, slowly started doing a little bit of weights. So I'm kind of getting back into a routine, which feels just great. I don't feel like there's any restrictions. I have to be a little cautious of how I lift my leg, you know, getting on on and off the equipment, but I am getting back into control. Control and no pain. The important thing is um, being able to work out and um, feel good about it, not have a pain that was persistent there for so long. My doctor and I decided that I probably will not run again just because um, I really don't want to tear the cartilage down in the other hip. And um, cycling is something I've always I had loved, but I really wanted to get into cycling and do some long rides and stuff. So that's my goal is to get into some, instead of running, bicycling. Here in Washington, there's so much to do being outside. So I love living here. I mean, I was brought up in the country and raised in the country, and you know, I was outside all the time. And I just like being in the fresh air. It's just part of my nature. There are just certain things I, I have to be careful with, like getting on my bike. I mean, I just can't plop on it. I mean, I really have to like take my time getting on it. But the pain is, it's just still recovery pain that I'm feeling, but it's nothing like the, the chronic pain that I was living with. That looks fantastic. I'm, I'm pretty impressed to see somebody doing that kind of activity at this point. What I'd be looking at in the office, though, is I would be looking at flexibility of the hip, and I'd be looking at somebody walking and let's, let's go ahead and see how we're doing now. Okay. So that, that looks great. What I'm looking for here is I'm looking to see that it's even. I'm looking to see that you have normal strength on both sides. How are you feeling at this point? Great. It's been 10 weeks. Fantastic. Since the surgery. Let's take a look at some more of the activities. Okay. I just love the workout. I do. You need to exercise. I don't do it just because it's a healthy thing to do. With me, if I don't get out, if I don't get some type of adrenaline going, then, you know, that's how I release all my frustrations, all my anxieties, so that I'm not, you know, home being crabby to my family. The other thing is challenging myself going up hills. I mean, that's my motivation for, you know, getting out there and exercising is challenging myself. I like to feel those muscles working, you know, and the tightness of my muscles. And when I'm going up a hill, you know, feeling that, that my, my muscles are working, the strength. I mean, I, I think that's the biggest thing is I like the strength, knowing that I have strength. And, you know, for a girl, that's important to us to, to know that we do have the strength, that we are building that strength. So, you know, yeah, I like the, feel, I like the feeling of the muscles working. I do. That's a high right there. Well, that is very impressive to watch somebody with a total hip replacement doing that kind of activity this quickly. Is there anything you want to add or anything you want to bring to the audience's attention before we close this? I just want to say thank you for giving me my new hip and um, giving me my um, life back of active activities that I'm used to doing. And the most important thing is being able to have a good night's sleep. And um, so I would recommend this procedure to anyone that's even thinking about um, getting a new hip. Great, great. Well, Janice, thank you so much for joining us today. And this is Paul Manor. Thank you very much for joining us on Talk Medicine. Okay. I've seen such a transition already, just in 10 weeks. You know, I can see it getting easier and easier, that the recovery pain is getting less and less every week. I'm very cautious about my hip, knowing that it is something that's, you know, artificial. And I have to be careful, I have to, be, I have to nurture it. I don't want, you know, I want it to last for a long time. The hip replacement totally has given me my, you know, my life back and being outdoors and doing the things that I love to do.